Hello everyone, I'm Wen Han. You can call me James. I'm a second year student in Master of IT, and today I'd like to present my project, Bluetooth. As its name suggests, it's a mix of Bilibili and YouTube. So basically, it's a YouTube, but allows you to post bullet comments directly on the videos. Here's an overview of what I'm going to talk about. First, I'm going to have a brief walkthrough of YouTube. Then I'm going to introduce the technologies used to build it, which is Vue.js for frontend and Node.js for backend. Then I'd like to introduce to you how I've implemented the bullet comment functionality. So let's go. Here we are at the home screen. Like YouTube, you can infinitely scroll to the bottom to find all videos. If I click into one of them, we see everything we would normally expect from YouTube, right? And you can also see these bullet comments. As a visitor, I can submit bullet comments. But for this traditional comment, I have to log in. So after I have logged in, you can see a user center that have my account info and my posted videos. I can also post new videos here. I can also add videos into my playlists. or see new updates from my subscribed video creators. That's it for the short introduction. Please feel free to visit my site using this URL and explore its functionalities. If you found any bugs, please email me. I'll be much appreciated. Now I'm going to talk a bit about the technologies and architectures of Viewtube. As I've said, I've used Vue.js for frontend and Node.js for backend. I'm not confident I could explain these two better than their creators. So I've left these two links here, which I think explains these two technologies really concisely and clearly. Meanwhile, I'll focus on introducing Viewtube on a conceptual level. So in this course, Helen taught us to use CodeIgniter to write MPAs, multi-page applications. The architecture looks like this. Every time we submit a HTTP request, the server responds with views, HTML, CSS, JavaScript files, which is rendered by server-side languages like PHP. It's been very good over the years, but it's not perfect. Because for example, the HTML pages and CSS files are sent with every server response. But for modern web applications, it's very likely we'll have some same UI elements across multiple pages, like the header or navigation bar. If the same elements are sent with every client-server communication, we're wasting part of the network traffic. So the idea of improving this is to send view to client once, and each subsequent changes on view is handled by client-side language, JavaScript. That's kind of the idea of single-page application frameworks, such as Vue, React, or Angular, as you might have heard of. So under this architecture, client-side interacts with REST APIs that allows it to communicate data with the server. In my project, it's written in Node.js. So when a client sends a request, the server responds with JSON data, and once the client receives that data, it renders views dynamically based on it. You might be wondering, that seems just to be another way of doing things. What's so special about it? It turns out it has these advantages. First, like I said, it saves network traffic, as we are only communicating data. Views are handled by JavaScript on the client side, which is already cached when user first enter the website. Second is that, since it's cached locally, it could change views super fast. Thus, it brings a better user experience. For example, if I go to this upload video page, it is loaded immediately. And if I want to add a new playlist, then you'll see you won't jump to another page. So it brings a better user experience. Third is that it separates front end with back end very well. For each view in the front end, you know what kind of data you'll have. And all you need to do as a front-end developer is to present them in a nice way. And for back-end, you only need to worry about one thing, what kind of data you will receive from the client and what data you want to send back. Of course, such implementation also has drawbacks, which I won't talk about it here. But if you're interested, feel free to search single-page application or Vue.js official document on Google. 
Now I'd like to talk about one of the key features I think is very interesting to discuss with you, the bullet comments. So bullet comments are user-written comments displayed straight over the video. It's believed to create more fun to viewers and is quite popular for video sites in Japan and China. So technically, how do I achieve this? It involves four steps. First, I need to store them in backend. Second, I need to use some CSS to make them move over the video. Third, I need to make them appear at the right time the user entered the comment. And lastly, I need to avoid them overlapping each other. And let's look at them one by one. The first step is really simple, right? For minimum requirement, you just store the ID, timestamp, and content. It will work. It's no difference to storing a normal comment in the database. The second step is a bit tricky. For an element to be able to move between designated positions, we just need to set position absolute top zero for it to locate at this position. To move it horizontally, you might think change its left value can work. Indeed, it will work, but performance-wise, using transform is better. And we can use Translate 3D to involve GPU in rendering the animation. For its ending position, we can set negative 100% of its X axis, that's the pixel length of the bullet comment. For starting position, it should be set dynamically to respond to different screen sizes, so we need to get the video width and set it dynamically through view. With that, we'll get this. The third step is to make them appear at the right video time. I have this bullet comments array, which is fetched from database, and an empty array that store bullet comments that should be displayed. When video is playing, it emits on time update event, then I can get current time of video and check it with the timestamp of bullet comments in this array. If any bullet comment is due for displaying, it will be added to the show array. Then, View will use its dynamic list rendering to render the bullet comment on the screen, so I don't need to worry about this part. So far, most of this functionality seems good, but with one flaw, what if this happens? So the last thing should be done is to avoid bullet comments overlapping each other. And how to achieve it sounds very tricky, but once you've got the concept, it's super easy. Basically, I want to make sure each letter bullet comment doesn't crash into its previous one. If I could achieve this, then no bullet comments will clash with each other. Here's the logic to achieve this. First, let's divide the screen into logical lanes, each with height of 25 pixels. Then starting from lane 0, for each new bullet comment, I want to check if the new bullet comment will crash into the previous one in the lane. If it will, I move on to the next lane to perform the same check. If not, I can safely set its CSS top property to match this lane's top value. The final question is how to determine if a bullet comment will crash into a previous one. It turns out to be a chase problem. Here, the distance to chase and speed difference and time it takes for a bullet comment to finish its journey on screen is known. We can easily divide these two values to get the time it takes to catch up T1. Then these two values will be compared. If T1 is greater than or equal to T2, or T1 is negative, it means the latter can never catch up the previous one in their lifetime. Therefore, it's safe to place the new one in this lane. Otherwise, the latter will catch up. Therefore, it will move on to check the next lane. With all the four steps checked, I've now got a nice looking bullet comment functionality. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have done this functionality. So I'm very curious, what is your approach of implementing this? Please let me know. And that's all for my presentation. Again, you're welcome to visit my website and thanks for watching this presentation.